going on guys matt schaefer back here from mosaic design lewis delaware sound effects got another build for you this one is a hi-fi 3 and 2015 bmw x5 so let's check it out so starting with what we did in the back um as you can see everything is very oem looking uh, we were able to hide the amplifier behind this panel. So we have the JLVXI 808. That's going to run our front three ways active and it's going to run the rears. And then it's also going to have a preamp output to our HD 751 that's going to go to our two uh, 12 TW3 JL audio subwoofers. So as you can see, we took out the factory amp back here. We installed a Mo bridge and that's basically going to take the signal from our factory radio and it's going to de-time align it, de-EQ everything, uh, sum all the signals together, and it's also going to give us the ability to take Bluetooth, navigation voice, chimes, distance control for parking, all that kind of stuff, and sum it into whatever speakers we want to. So that is going to feed analog into our VXI here. And then we're also going to have another input for our AMAS 96K, which is going to run optic input into this processor here, this amplifier processor. Cool thing about this is it's amp and a processor all in one. It runs a little bit cheaper than if you do everything separate, but you know, you don't have as much real estate to take up because everything is involved in one piece. So it makes it very convenient for installation's sake. So I'm not sure if you can see it here, but we made a little uh, update plate here. So you have the input for the USB for our JLVXI amplifier for tuning. You have our MoBridge input, and then you have the OBD bypass for the MoBridge here. That way, if uh, BMW has to scan the car, you can just flip this five times real quick, and then you would be able to communicate with the scan tool. So all that sits nicely behind that panel. And then underneath the floorboard is basically where our subwoofers are. Uh, I'll get some shots in a darker scenario so you can actually see what the lights look like lit up. Uh, might as well show that to you right now. So this gives you a good idea of what it looks like in a darker atmosphere. We have LEDs that go around this piece of acrylic here. Got the BMW logo etched, back etched on our laser CNC in the acrylic. We have a really cool pattern basically cut out. It's like a circular pattern that varies in the hole sizes to make it look really, really cool. So you can see back here as well, we have two layers of acrylic that are sandwiched between uh, black layers with grill mesh on the outside. And basically that just kind of shows us the height coming up from this piece, just to give it the depth. And of course this, uh, actuator here falls right down in that opening so just to give it a nice finished look kind of like a little hidden detail you don't really notice until you start looking at it but again these are rgb lights so if we pull up this floor here you see the batteries right and then we have the fuses for our amplifiers which are behind here but we have our remote controller here so if you want to change it you can turn it off you can turn it on, you can pick your color, you can do like a slow fade, you know, however you want to do it. So, you know, this guy's from Kansas City, so if he's at a Chiefs game, tailgating, throw it on red. This uh, light blue here is what matches the factory dash, maybe you can see it all the way up there. But uh, same color, that's why we did RGB lights. Another note too, these lights actually turn on with the trunk lights, these lights up here. When this is open, only when the trunk is open, then gives power to these lights. So when all, you know, when the trunk lid is closed and you're inside the car, these are not lit up. So only when the trunk is open. So going back through this, you have two JL12 TW3 subwoofers underneath this panel. And you see all these little circles. Again, this is just to let you know, air kind of flow and circulate from the subwoofers, you know, kind of as our grill pass through, right? Uh, you have your lit BMW emblem here, which is etched in the back of the acrylic. Aluminum accents here, here, and here, up here in these corners to basically emulate what you see here in the trunk. You can see it all over the dashboard. There's a lot of aluminum accents. So as you can see all the lines back here, you have a ton of arcs everywhere because if you look on the BMW, especially on the dashboard and the interior, there's arcs everywhere. They don't use any hard lines. It's all big swooping arcs. So we took a, you know, that design cue and we incorporated it into everything that we have here because that 
uh, those shapes there mimic a lot of what you see on the dashboard. And again, on the dashboard as well, you have that thin light blue light that illuminates a dashboard. So that's why we did the RGB lights and you can basically dial in that perfect hue of blue within this acrylic here. Also built this panel here. So as you can see, it looks a lot like this. And again, we just wanted to kind of keep that same design running all the way through. So underneath here, you have a little pull tab and you can get to and service still the battery, the battery for what I believe is the air compressor, I wanna say. That's why it has a second battery. A lot of people asked me on the last build that we did, uh, if we added the second battery, this is factory. Uh, you have your controller for the RGB lights. You have both fuses for each amplifier. Again, right here, very easy to get to. So again, you don't have to service anything. There is nothing underneath this. This was just a, it wasn't even a spare tire well. It was just a area for storage. So in this case, we utilize this entire area. Everything sits underneath the floor. This sits right back in there, pushes down. And then we can just roll tuck that right there. And then shut that like that the challenge with any bmw most are set up the same whether it's a 3 series 5 series x type you have multiple challenges right so in this case you have a mid base wolfer underneath the car which in the factory sense is almost more like a shaker um you know it's not a subwoofer a lot of people say you know under seat sub it's more of a mid base woofer so you know kind of keep that in mind because it's responsible for playing a lot of those important mid bass frequencies because you have you know your factory four here and then you have the factory tweeter right there problem with these mids are is one they're waist high and they're if you can look at them they're aiming towards the ground because of how the door panel is molded along with the door skin you can't really pitch that to kind of aim higher so again that is your most important speaker within any audio system is th those mid-range frequencies. So in the case of this car, we built these pillars up here. So factory pillars, right? And then we remolded them to accept these uh, Illusion C3CX speakers. And it's basically a point source speaker. And what that means is the tweeter of that speaker is on the same exact plane as the mid-range. So they're time aligned with each other which makes it really easy for tuning and it makes it really easy for installing because in a separate, when you have a separate, right? So if we have a three-way separate that has its own tweeter away from the mid-range, now we have two different speakers that we have to mount. So it makes the pillars look a lot more bulky based on how you have to mold, mold the uh, pillar. And you can get the this type of speaker on axis and still have it look good. Um, Cause again, if we had a tweeter, imagine another hump here for the tweeter, which would look pretty bad in my opinion. And you know, whenever we build these cars, we always take functionality into play. Uh, people want to retain the OEM look. They want it to flow in. They don't want monstrosities, right? So if we were an Iasco or we're doing a Mecca car, then yeah, you know, you can do three ways in that sense and nobody really cares what it looks like because, you know, it's not really a daily driver or you're, you're not caring about how it looks within the car. So in this case, this is the best speaker in order to achieve this. We got the mid and the tweeter right here up on the dash and, you know, it's on access to the driver. And what that means is we're, we're basically within the whole width dispersion of the speaker, as opposed to if it was off axis shooting this way, we're not really utilizing this, we're getting more reflections of the windshield. So this is kind of taking a lot of what the car does negatively to an audio system out of the equation. So it's gonna sound much, much better. And when we have this, it's very easy to time align and get that, what I like to call perfectly perfect center image. So when we're hearing a vocal here in the center, they are right there. You can make out their whole, you know, almost their whole body right there in front of you singing. And you can stare at these while they're playing and you hear that vocal and you would swear that these aren't even playing. You know, you can go up to it and then, yeah, you can finally hear, hear it playing. But in this case, there is no center channel that's been removed. And it sounds like there's a massive, you know, six, 
or eight inch speaker there right there on the dashboard. That's what makes it so beautiful when you can do this to your audio system. It makes it completely different. It's a complete game changer. Most people have never heard a car that is properly done like that. So that's kind of the whole uh, reasoning behind why we do the speakers in the pillar and we try and avoid factory locations like on some cars you got the mid-range or tweeters up here bouncing off the glass glass is a reflective surface and that negatively impacts our tuning ability because a reflection is a reflection there's not a lot that you can do about it so that's kind of the theory and reasoning why we like to pick where the speaker is going to go for each car based on where the factory components are and again bmw is always a little bit of a challenge because of all the obstacles that they present with with the locations of these drivers looking at this here this was just like a little empty coin tray we made this panel here and this is our controller for vxi amplifier so the cool thing about this is we have three presets we hit this one time it turns the factory color which is that blue that you see there on the dash this is the factory radio so when it's lit up this color it's going to play everything that our factory radio is playing when we hit it one more time it's going to turn purple and the purple is going to indicate our high-res bluetooth streaming so if he wants to stream his phone or wants to use media from his phone it's going to sound substantially better on this preset then running through the factory radio, even if you were plugged in. Because at that point, the technology that goes into the factory radio, the sampling and all that kind of stuff, you can run much higher resolution music through this preset here. And then we hit it one more time, and that's green. That's basically gonna go to our DAC here. This is an Astell and Kern um, SE100, and this gives us the ability to play everything up to DSD analog output, which is what this preset is. So this is um, two analog inputs into our uh, GLVXI amplifier, which is then going to disperse a signal directly to the amplifier. And in doing it this way, obviously we have a uh, much better DAC in this scenario. It's a dual DAC, one for the left channel, one for the right channel. And we can play, you know, higher resolution music, obviously music that is closer to or, or in its native format rather than what you find on Spotify or Pandora, iTunes, anything like that where it's heavily compressed. So this is the, you know, other game changer from using a phone in a system. You know, you'll get substantially better audio doing it this way, much more depth, separation, width, all that kind of stuff that you want to hear. Best thing I can describe is when you have something playing this good in the car tuned as well as it's tuned, you can listen to a song like Pink Floyd Time where you hear all the alarm clocks in the beginning and it doesn't sound like they're just, you know, all jumbled together. You can close your eyes and you can pick out where each alarm clock is going off. Uh, if you listen to the track enough times, you could probably count how many are actually going off based on the separation. It's that easy to pinpoint where each thing has its own place and on, you know, on your dashboard. So that's where music becomes really fun. I always tell a lot of clients, it's almost like you've never used your hearing until you sit in a car like this based on separation and things coming from each place in the soundstage. So really, really cool, really, really important. But you know, that's your big breakdown of how this stuff works. Again, we use the Focal under seat woofers. It's a direct replacement. We used the Illusion C3 CX in the pillar. We utilize the factory rear speakers uh, and then we have our two subwoofers. So that really makes up our whole audio system here. And like always guys, if you have a build, whether it's a BMW, I've done, I've done another X5, which has a lot of views on YouTube. You can check that one out. I will link it in the description. Also, if you wait till the end of the video, you'll see the screen pop up that you can click on to actually see that build. But again, it doesn't matter what car it is. We can do anything for you. So whether that be a Tesla, BMW, Mercedes, again, doesn't really matter. We do all sorts of projects. My phone number is right here, followed by my email address. Uh, those are the two best points of contact. Also, make sure to check out our website. This is a great tool to see all the cars that we've done, the build logs of all the cars we've done attached with the YouTube video of each build that we've done. So if you wanna see the behind the scene pictures of a build like this or something else that we've done, check that out. Uh, again, 
wonderful tool to see how the different audio system and tiers break down. Uh, definitely give that a look. You also have Instagram. Here's our three handles down here below at the real Matty S. That's my personal sound effects home car. That's for our shop and music design, which is the division that I run within sound effects. Also, make sure you guys subscribe, hit the bell, get alerted when I drop a new video. Uh, if you are interested in seeing builds and hearing how they're explained and why we do things a certain way, definitely hit that bell so you can be notified every time a new video comes out. Don't forget to subscribe. And like always, guys, I appreciate it. Until next time. Forgetting you don't love me no more